Coach, what's happening, man? We welcome in Coach David Patrick, Sac State Hornets. Coach, we trick or treating last night. What, what was your Halloween like? Yeah, man, it was that first Halloween in Sacramento, so I was trick or treating with my girls, um, and we had a great time. We were over in, um, I guess, in the forties or fabulous forties. Oh you know, Lord, I was about to say I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to put you know the location out Ooh. there, but I know it's popping where you at, Coach. It was, it, 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 it was all right. where I lived. It was straight too, but I, I, I got away. I put, I put the candy outside and took my kids over to to the 40s and they, they had a blast man that's the place you know what's oddly enough is i don't think i've ever been to the fab 40s mm. i know where they're at i know the location you know i used to go to mckinley park all the time to play basketball and barbecue i don't think i've ever been like on a drive to the fab not even for christmas lights i might have to do that this year it's, it's nice over there I, when i when i got the job mark now, athletic director told me I'll be a good place for you to live. So I went and looked at the prices, and I ain't been over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, not all, the, not all of us are built for that. Yeah, no, no, no. I think the trick or treating over there, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Coach, man, we're 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 getting real, real close to the start of the season. We, you know, we were talking about this. You got UCLA, you know, to start things off. Is there is is there still an aura? You know, it's 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 been a while, but is there still an aura about playing UCLA and about playing at UCLA? You know, I I think definitely for me. You know, I'm looking at my table here. I got Coach Wooden's book on my on my table, and and uh, you know, he's his pyramid to success. And um, I think even for my staff and my players, they know what UCLA is. You know, the tradition. Part of me is to try to teach them before we go down there exactly what UCLA has done in the past, because I think it's important. Um, obviously we're playing UCLA, but going down there and telling them about the history of the players before, you know, these guys have never seen Kareem and, and they don't know who Bill Walton is. They think Bill Walton's a commentator. They don't know the success that he's had as a player. So I want them to, to get that experience while we're down there. Um, also have a ton of respect for coach Cronin and his team and, uh, just really soak in what UCLA is about, but at the same time, go down there and, and compete. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, having that discussion about like, do the kids understand, what UCLA is. I said they probably don't because it was different when we were playing. Like UCLA was still UCLA. Now, no, even though they went to they went to three straight final fours with Ben Howland, they might they might have seen that. But ironically, for like West Coast basketball, probably in the last 10, 10 years, it's been Gonzaga, St. Mary's. Am I forgetting anybody else? Like those have been the dominant oh, West Coast. Uh, schools. Uh, probably been the other one that they probably two made. Years been there. Yeah. The, yeah, but I guess the, the that's the crazy thing about it is like when you think about West Coast basketball in the last 10 years, it's Gonzaga, St. Mary's, Arizona, Oregon did some things here and there, but you know, it, it's not the traditional West Coast powers that we're used to. No, no doubt. You know, I think they were run last year, they were close to being a, a final four team. And um, you know, I think Coach Cronin's obviously got that thing that that tide changed down there. Um, yeah. But they don't know it like, as we know it. But I want them to know the history and the significance of playing on Coach Wooden's court. And yeah. I mean, you get these experiences maybe once in a lifetime. Um, obviously, I want them to know, but don't you know have a respect for them. But don't go down there scared. Like we can still going down there to compete yeah. and try to win the game. But I think they need to know, um, you know, what, what UCLA was all about. Yeah. I don't know why, Coach, but it feels like you've been coaching Sac State for a really, really long time. <laughs> Probably just because we've been talking about you so much, yeah. but. You're coming up like th th this isn't only the first game of the season. This is the first game for you. And like I know I I get nervous before every show. Every day at 1145, my stomach starts feeling a little different and I get anxious for the for 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 the light to come on. Do you do you still get nervous before, you know, games, before coaching debuts? Does that stuff still get you? You know what? Yeah, it's, you know, it's my second time around as a head coach, and I still you still think you get nerves. Otherwise, you know, it's why we do it, you know. But uh I'm more nervous about um, am I, have, do I have my team prepared enough to play? Like, am I going to have the answers, uh, to some of the questions that come up during the game? That's probably what more I get nervous about, not about the stage, not about the, you know, who we're playing against, but more about that. Like, am I, do I have my team ready to play? Um, so that'll probably start maybe, maybe Sunday night, you know, but, but, mm -hmm. you know, when you played so much, man, there's only, if, as long as I've done from April to now to get them prepared for every scenario, if I've done me and my staff have done what we can to put them out there. Um, I'm not as nervous about them executing. I just want the answers for when for when problems yeah. come up. Yeah, for sure. Hey, I wanted to ask you something just on a on a coaching level because last week, uh, 
was, I mean, last week was was so different than what we 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 were feeling today for the two and four <laughs> Sacramento Kings. Last week, I think they were zero and three, and I kept saying it was really important for Coach Mike Brown to have these guys understand that it's early in the season and what we're doing, what we're trying to do is still attainable if we stay focused on the values that we've created in training camp. And I, you know, I've coached on a, on a different level, on a high school level, but I just wanted to get your perspective of it and how you would go about it as a coach to say, say you start off 0 and 4 like they did and still getting these guys to say, Hey, we're okay. You know, I see things within the game that we're doing correctly. We just have to do that more often. What What's some of, uh, of, of the things that you use to kind of keep people, keep some of your players to not necessarily look at the record, but look at the, the bigger result of, of the process that you're trying to do? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head. It's, pro, it's process driven. You know, are we doing, are we making steps in the right direction? Not, you know, not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, you know, when something goes wrong, like you got to stick to your process along the way. And there's going to be some bumps and bumps in the road along the way. I'm sure for Coach Mike that there is for me. There's going to be some scenarios that come up in these first two or three games that I haven't done in practice, but I can go over. And hopefully over the course of the season, when those same scenarios come up again, we can fix it. And that's usually what happens when you're taking over. You're taking over a program. You can't put out every fire at one time. But as long as you um, are able to do that along the way and not change your philosophy every week, which some young coaches do. Um, you know, I think your team will be fine in the long run. How do you coach? You, you know, you talked about, how, you know, having your team ready. How do you, you know, when, 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 when things go wrong, how do you identify, Hey, I, I, I missed this. I didn't teach this right. Versus, Hey, we went over this. <laughs> you didn't execute that right. Like, how do you, how do you kind of walk that fine line there? I think you got the game plan's got to be simple. Like I think some game plans are long drawn out you because the play happens so quick during the game. So you got to be, you know, keep your play, you know, your scouting report for the other team simple, um, but concise, you know, like, like, you know, KC does dri- dribbles, right? No threes, force them left. Like if he lets them go right, you can, you can get on them, but you got to keep it concise. And then for me, um, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to show every sideline pick and roll and middle pick and roll scenario that may come up. Um, show them how physical a team is on the glass and, and make sure our guys block out. Um, that's what we try to do, do as a team daily, uh, th- th- those habits. Hopefully the habits you're building in practice can then transfer over to the game. Hey, Coach, did I see this correctly that I don't know who comes up with this, the, the big sky riders, I don't know, whatever. They, they, they get you guys projected as sixth in the in the conference? Yeah, they did. Yeah, I know that's up in the locker room right now. They they didn't go to the practice like me, though. They didn't see what I saw. So I know I know a little bit more than they did. But I I, I gotta imagine, you know, the, the the kids, the players, they they see those things, and that's that's something I'm sure you're using for a little bit of motivation. They don't know what's in store uh in the big sky, what you got going on at Sac State right now. No, you know, and I think they've been picked highest to seventh last time, so we'll we'll take the six. But you know, the NBA is honoring, you know, late great Bill Russell with the number six. And so we got the number six in that locker room for, for six and and for Bill. So we so we know where we're picked. And uh and you know, but that, that but we haven't done anything. You know, the names and the size and all that stuff don't mean anything until we step out on the floor and play. Um, but that's some some added fuel for us to go out and compete, you know, every second in practice and then win the games. How do you get these? I mean, can you get the because you know, Harrison talk Harrison Barnes talks about this with the Kings about like this 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 team deserves to play as themselves and not have the weight of the last 16 years on them. Uh, you know, I I I have a note that Sac State is 0 and 16 against nationally ranked opponents. I'm sure your guys know that. How like can you convince it? Yo, that wasn't you. You weren't playing. You don't have to worry about that stat. How do you get them? Like, we've got to go out there and we've got to set our own path. You know, I think it started when these guys decided to come here. The guys that transferred here, like, they didn't worry about the past. They worried about what was in front of them, was me as their head coach and our staff, uh, what Sacramento has to sell. Um, the good thing about these kids nowadays, they don't look at history. I don't even know if they read, read history anymore. So they're, they're, they're not worried. The gift and the curse. <laughs> About, about the past so that's the that's the gift as you said and the curse that, that, that they're just worried about what's in front of them and um but you know I'm, hopefully i don't get you know what was it they've had some good stuff in the past when they were division two and whatnot here but 
you know, our focus is to try to be the best version of us we can be um, this week at UCLA and then at UC San Diego and then focus on the, the following week at Denver and then home against Merced. Yeah. Coach, to get you out of here on this. I know, know you're an NBA guy. I mean, what – What's catching your eye right now? You know, this the surprise of the Utah Jazz is one of them. And you, you see uh, all the teams that everybody thought was tanking um, are kind of playing well right now. I said this for much of the offseason. There is so much talent in the NBA right now. Like there is like the team that you think is the worst team in basketball. Even they got two guys that are like, yo, this, this guy can go. This guy can really go. I mean, it's, what, what's some of the things that's caught your eye so far in the first two weeks of the season? Well, one thing I got out of practice today, I saw, unfortunately, Coach Nash was fired at the net. So that was a shock right. after finally winning last night. And I, I felt like I watched that game that they, they were up 20 at one point and then, yeah. then obviously he lost his job. But that was something, I guess, growing in the summer. Um, so that surprised me. You know, I think but you, you hit Utah. I'm shocked that they're doing as well as they have with, with Devin Mitchell leaving and, and, and new coach uh, in place. I think the Trailblazers, I think, were, yeah. were a little bit. But surprise number one seed in the West right now. Mm-hmm. No doubt. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I went to the game. I might have saw you there, the like the practice yeah. battle, the, the scrim the not the scrimmage, but the preseason game here. And they didn't look like the same team, you know, to, to yeah. start up that way. Um, and I think they got a young other than Dame, they got a bunch of young guys, you know, that are mm-hmm. that are playing well. Um, and then I think Giannis, I mean, I'm shocked that he's doing again what he's doing. Um oh, night in, night out, man. You know, yeah. it's, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, what you do with a player like that, Coach? <laughs> What's the game plan? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you got a sledgehammer out there or something. <laughs> Quit. Quit. <laughs> Blindfold in a cigarette, Coach. Blindfold. <laughs> yeah. Get COVID that night. It's still around. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, yeah. Coach, we'll be we'll be locked in, man. It's crazy. The next time we talk, you will have played a regular season game. Mm. We will, man. Hopefully, hopefully I got got a de- you know if I come back on here and our guys compete and play with a toughness and edge, regard regardless of the score, I'll be smiling. If not, you know I may still be in L.A. trying to find. You're gonna be listening to uh, NWA. Uh, NWA. Here we go get the NWA <laughs> version. Of yeah, I'll be trying to find some NWAs down there. So. <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you, Coach. Best of luck. We'll be watching. We'll be listening, and uh, we'll be anxious to, to to talk to you next week. Take care. Thanks, coach. guys. As always.